videos. But right now, let's see Matthew's lap with the Porsche Cup at Sebring. Going into turn one, let's see his approach. So immediately, what we can notice is that Matthew was very early on throttle on entry. Like right now, we have this reference point, this cone in the wall, this orange cone, which we want to apex very closely around it. But in our case, Matthew Apex is a bit earlier and he's putting the power down earlier. Like right now, he's already back on power, which indicates that he overslowed the car a bit on entry. That's the reason why he's able to put the power down this early. And generally, being early on power makes sense and you will gain on the exit. But if you're way too early on power, you won't gain that time on exit just because you won't be able to confidently hold the throttle. Like, for example, right now, if we're going to look at the rate of increasing the throttle percentage, because right now he's using something like 30%. But while we go more and more into the corner, he has to maintain, maintain and then commit. So this tells us that this is not ideal, firstly. Because... If we, he would have Apex just a bit later, just a bit around here and put the power down here, then he would have been instantly flat out. So Matthew is losing a bit of time on entry with the braking and he's turning a bit too early. What we want to do instead here is to turn after the kink. So you're looking at the kink, turn slightly after or at the kink and try to brake after you turn in, not on a straight line. So turn a bit, then apply the brakes, so you can already put the car on a nice trajectory and then brake less, brake less, brake less, and turn a bit less the steering wheel here, because you're apexing at this point, where in reality, the better place to apex, so instead of apexing in this position, you just want to carry the momentum to roll the speed more into the corner and apex here instead. So it's like two, three meters in front, you're gonna apex very close to this cone. And then when you go on power, it's gonna be a whole different story because right now what's happening is this, you break a bit too much on entry, you're a bit over slowing the car on entry, and then when you put the power down, you have to do something like this. Instead, brake less. So the fix will be to brake less, even a bit later, because you're going to turn in a bit later. And a bit more, because you have to apex a bit later as well. And even though you will be later on power, it's going to be something like this instead. So you will gain time because firstly, you will break less. So you will gain a bit of time on entry. So here you will be time gain on entry. But also you will gain time here. All this part right here is going to be a lot of time gaining on exit. Obviously, you're going to lose a bit of time mid corner like this part right here you're gonna lose because you will be just a bit later on throttle so mid corner you're gonna lose a bit but overall the time that you gain again on entry plus the exit will give you a superior advantage that will offset the time lost in the mid part of the corner so that's your turn one definitely you can improve it a lot more Going into the next sequence of corners, quite difficult track here in the first sector. Bra you're braking before the third. You can brake just a bit later and downshift quicker here. So try to push the braking point just a bit more forward and also notice this. You're going off the brakes and then you're reapplying the brakes. This is all about rotating the car with the brakes. So instead of braking this hard at this point, dropping to zero and then reapplying it, instead 
keep the brakes applied but brake less it's gonna be the same thing right here the only difference is gonna be that you will you will instead of and dropping and then applying again a bit of brakes you will brake re less in general so you, you can maintain maybe the same initial peak braking just a bit later maintaining the same peak but then you're gonna trail brake more softly like this you see so you're not over slowing the car in this part but also you're not dropping the brakes so the car won't understeer and you're maintaining the rotation going forward and because you're gonna brake a bit later you will also downshift quicker so your downshifts will be a lot quicker like this instead of being something like that you see the difference in downshift quickly, quickly is going to be that you will brake a bit less, so you'll use the fronts a bit less. You're going to still maintain a very controlled shape, but you will add some engine braking to help you. Because we lost a bit of time at corner with that understeer and then fixing of the understeer. Now, going here, too much braking pressure again. So the car is not rotating enough just because you have too much braking applied. You want to trail brake with lower percentages and brake less initially. You want the car to actually be more over steering in this section rather than under steering. And if you look at your steering wheel in this section, look at your steering wheel. There's no counter steer at all it's just using the fronts you want to almost almost have to do micro counter steer in this section just to make sure you're rotating with the brakes and you're gonna align the fronts afterwards so keep it in mind brake a bit less trail brake a bit longer and you will get that over steery that you need now into the hairpin braking looks good but Again, notice what you're doing on exit. So your brake shape and the brake release is good. It's just that it's a bit too much. Like right now you're going on throttle, but then you realize it's too early because the car was very slow at this point and you had to compensate with a blimp of throttle, but then you realize you won't make it and you have to do this correction. And this correction in the hairpin will be something like two tenths at least. If you're gonna do this type of correction, even dropping a bit of throttle and then going back, that's gonna be easily to tense. So if you're gonna have to do a correction under throttle, make sure you not drop it to zero. That's the first thing to minimize it. But the root cause of it, and it was a chain reaction. So the, the previous cause, let's say, for this blimp of throttle and then drop, was that the car was very slow initially and you had the need to do it a, bl a bit of blimp but then the car would understeer and you back off and the car was very slow initially because we held a bit the brakes too much like your brake shape looks good you're maintaining the pressure you, your brake shape looks really good it's just that you're braking a bit too much in the trail braking part so the plateau is very good you're doing this part right here quite nicely so uh, let, let's draw it again the initial part of the braking is is close to close to perfect so you're doing this very good maintaining and then once you go into this part in the brake release you're releasing it a bit too much like I'm over over emphasizing it right now for you to see it so instead of doing the instead of doing the orange line you're doing the red line in which you're braking too much here so you kill the momentum of the car on the brake release you want to drop it a bit more sharply but still controlling it in the lower percentages because that's where the magic happens also you will be able to brake a bit later if you downshift quickly like right now these are very lazy downshift five four third second first you want to downshift quickly initially you want to spam the downshift here to downshift as quickly as the car can downshift 
so you can break a bit later and still carry the momentum going forward. Now, going into the next corner, let's see the approach again. Very hard on the brakes initially, and again, the car is a bit too slow at this point. You could have been a bit earlier on throttle as well, because the car was slow, but you still maintain the brakes after the apex. You could have went into the power and give and start already being on throttle because you see you still have a bit more space you don't want to use all the space you want to go you don't want to go all the way to the left but still you want to use a bit more let's see the next one because it's very similar we're breaking way too early here even before a reaching the third we're breaking which is very early and now the car is slow you see because of the early braking now you're on power and you won't be able to keep this throttle you have to do corrections right now let's see you see you had to wait with the throttle so nine times out of ten putting putting the power down firmly will be quickly quicker than putting it a bit earlier but holding it like this and then putting the power back on so again the root cause was the braking you need to carry a bit more speed into the corners let's go into the next one very early on the brakes this looked good what you should aim for in between those two so right now, after you finish the braking and you go on power, is to reach 100% blimp of throttle. So right now your only goal is to go to 100% and then turn the car with the brakes. You're not doing bad, but you're at 85 or something. So focus on giving it 100% in between those two. This will give you like half a tenth. Cut more this curb. It's very uncomfortable, but you have to use the half part of it because this curb, if you go slower with the car, you will see that at its tallest point on the left, that's where the curb is, is a killer. But if you use half of it, then everything is fine. So use more the curb. You use just the beginning. You can use a bit more while turning into this. And again, we're braking way too early. You have to push the car more forward then brake because you're very early on throttle once again and this timing that it's missing so your inputs are not bad it's just that the timing it, it's killing you in these corners because you're braking way too early and you're going way too early back on power and this will mean that you won't be able to keep the power down nice and firmly and since it's a big big straight it's going to affect a lot the lap time. So let's see your throttle. You see, you have to drop it to zero, maintain, and then go. So obviously, if you're going to be able, and if another driver behind you or chasing you or in front of you, on this straight, instead of doing, you're doing something like this. Well, let me use another color. So what you're doing is this. You're going initially early, dropping it, and then maintaining and go. Imagine the driver that you're chasing is doing this instead. You see, because of the big straight, he's going to be a lot quicker. Like he can gain two, three tenths and then draft you and it's very important here to get a good exit just because of the big big straight so keep it in mind work on the timing and now let's see the last corner very early breaking point you should break closely to this white line right here so definitely after the second cone the car is very slow at this point you can use this reference uh, this white line as a reference and have the car on the left of it just a bit on the left so you can open up the next corner but because the speed was very slow you had to, to use this narrow line the line is good the apexes are good it's just that you're carrying way less speed than needed so make a bigger arc into this corner if you're gonna have a bi bigger radius 
you'll be able to carry a lot more speed. For example, if you're going like this instead, and then you're going back on the track. So use a bit more the track in this part and it will gain you a lot of life, lap time, easily 3, 4 tenths here when you're carrying the proper amount of speed on entry and mid corner. And in short, uh, that's the analysis of your lap, Matthew. Uh, I think you will improve a lot. I'm looking forward to see you gain more and more lap time. And for everyone else, uh, thanks for watching and I'll be seeing you in the next video. Bye bye.